Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. On today's show, I have the pleasure of meeting with one of the lawyers of Nafisa Tou Diallo, of course, the woman at the heart of the case against Dominique Strauss-Kahn, at the heart of the scandal that's rocked uh, the political establishments, the legal ones as well, on both sides of the Atlantic. Douglas Wigdor, thanks very much indeed for meeting with us. Thank you for having me. After all these months, uh, you spoke to the press in Paris here today, uh, and you delivered a damning indictment, really, of the way the case has been handled by Cyrus Vance, uh, Manhattan's district attorney. Uh, what went wrong? Well, uh, unfortunately, the uh, district attorney's office has treated Ms. Diallo as a defendant in this case from the very onset rather than a victim. Um, I, I really don't understand why that's happened. I think there might be some lack of experience in that office. But from the very beginning of the case, uh, Ms. Diallo was put um, in a hotel with no security in the middle of Brooklyn. Um, she was, uh, her phones were confiscated from her. Her family's records were subpoenaed. Um, the district attorney's office has um, leaked damaging and false information uh, intended to discredit Ms. Diallo. Um, she's been yelled at and screamed at by various assistant district attorneys. Um, so there's a whole series of, of uh, things that have happened throughout the process and uh, that has ultimately led to this office uh, seeking dismissal of the case. When you read the uh, application for dismissal, it's clear that they've just come to find that she's an incredible witness, that she has lied repeatedly, that she has come to be seen as uh, unreliable, incredible, and they couldn't take the risk, very clearly, of asking a jury to believe something they had trouble believing themselves. Well, I think that the, the report that they wrote is advocacy. Um, I think that they started with the proposition that we want to get the judge to dismiss this case. Now let's write something that can justify that. And the reason I say that is because there are many misstatements in, in, in the, the document itself, and it doesn't talk about the things that prove the case. I mean, at the end of the day, there is a mountain of evidence that strongly suggests that Mr. Strauss-Kahn sexually assaulted Ms. Diallo. A grand jury of 23 ordinary people in New York found reason to believe that Mr. Strauss-Kahn sexually assaulted Ms. Diallo. The report doesn't talk about all of the, 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 the physical and forensic evidence. It doesn't go into detail and put it in a light that demonstrates that she is the victim. And the, the report also sort of just backhandedly uh, dismisses, well, we didn't want to um, interview Ms. Benan, even though um, Mr. Vance promised Mr. Kube and, and Mr. Montbriol, um, our local counsel, that he would in fact do that. Um, they said, well, her testimony is not relevant to Ms. Diallo's credibility, but um, that's not why that information is usually admitted. It's usually admitted to show lack of consent and to show modus operandi. This is Tristan Banon, of course, who's filed yes, in France for, for a case right. that goes back. Uh, you allude uh, to the mountain of evidence in favor of Mrs. Diallo's uh, case, of what she said, of her account uh, of events. G give us an idea of what you mean. Well, you have to start with the understanding that this whole sexual attack occurred in a nine-minute period. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is if, if it was a consensual act and Ms. Diallo didn't know who he was, you know, how, how, did that, how did that all go down in nine minutes? She walked into the room. A gentleman was coming out with a food tray. She asked him, is anyone in there? He said no. She went in there thinking nobody was there. She was then assaulted, not on a couch, not on a, a bed or anything like that. She was on the floor, and that's where the DNA evidence was found. She had a tear to her shoulder. She had bruising in her vagina, on the outside of her vagina. Her stockings were ripped. And um, the medical records support all of these things, that she was shaken up, she, she was visibly upset, she was spitting, trying to vomit. The medical records also um, uh, conclude that this was the diagnosis was because of um, an assault and or rape. You also have to understand that Dominique Strauss-Kahn then bolted out of the room like a common criminal. He had uh, toothpaste all over his mouth, and we know that through a witness account. Um, he jumped into a taxi cab, and um, he called his wife before the police came, and he told his wife that he had a grave problem and that he wanted to, um, to speak to his public relations team. And so you have to ask yourself, why, why is it in this, this rush to leave the scene of the crime, he would be telling his wife he had a grave problem. And, and the answer is obvious. He, he, he knew he had done something wrong. You catalogue in the press conference not just a series of incompetences on the part of his office, but almost a willful desire to 
uh, discredit uh, this witness. Why do you think Cyrus Vance's office would have made that decision? How do you explain it? Well, we, we didn't. Uh, we made those allegations in our motion to disqualify, and we didn't take them lightly. I mean, this is the first time I've ever seen a district attorney's office leak false information intended to discredit a victim of a sexual crime. And this is the first time I've seen the district attorney's office um, leak information about a person's immigration status and prior sexual history, all of which are going to have a, a very negative effect on future uh, women and other victims of crimes coming forward. Why did, why did he do this? Um, you know, I can only speculate, and my opinion is that um, as a new district attorney, there had been a district attorney prior to him, Robert Morgenthau, who had been in that office for decades, uh, very well regarded. This is his first term. He didn't want to try a case that was in the media and that uh, there might be issues down the road. It might be a difficult case. He had lost some very high profile cases. And um, I, I think that he thinks that this is the easy way out. Get it over with, clean your hands, and, and move on. Hopefully you can, you can find some case down the road that'll make you look good before election. What is the frame of mind today, after all of this, of Mrs. Diallo? Um, as you would imagine, she's devastated. Uh, she had the courage to stand up. That was not easy. Um, somebody from her background, from Guinea, and where she came from, and who she is, took a lot for her to come forward. Um, she was traumatized by what happened. And this has now been adding insult to injury to, uh, to have the district attorney's office turn its back on her and to, to meet with the district attorney's office yesterday in a very brief uh, meeting for 30 seconds to admit it, um, basically saying your case is going to be dismissed and then she, she would ask questions and they wouldn't answer it and shown the door. As one of her lawyers, do you have regrets or the things that you would have done differently with hindsight? Um, I have no regrets. My, my only re regret, well, first of all, let me say this, the, I mean, our case is just beginning. So, you know, we've got two years to litigate this case and we've just filed that complaint, so we have a lot to this do. This is the civil case. This is the civil case. But, um, no, I, I mean, I have, I have absolutely no regrets in the way we've handled the case to date. You're uh, looking ahead to the civil case. Indeed, you're in Paris not only to speak to the press, uh, but also to continue investigations. You've received, we hear, testimony from a number of women in a number of countries. Right. I understand that you don't want to talk about numbers or get into details, but what is the picture that's uh, emerged in your mind about who Dominique Strauss-Kahn is? A sadistic individual, somebody who uh, treats women as less than human and uh, somebody who feels that he's immune uh, from the law. And unfortunately, I think that the district attorney's decision is only going to further embolden and empower him. And when he comes back to France and he travels around the world, I fear for other, other victims. Now, we're going to hear, no doubt, more over the coming months and as this civil procedure unfolds. Um, what is the substance of what the women are saying? What are we going to learn, that he's a womanizer or far worse? Well, if he was just a womanizer, somebody who sort of is um, chatting up women, so to speak, that, we're, not, we're not interested in that. What we're talking about is using coercion to, um, to get women to do certain things. What will the civil procedure lead to? What could it lead to? Um, I think ultimately when the civil trial proceeds, people will watch it like they did with the O.J. Simpson case after there was an acquittal and they watched that case. And I think at the end of the day, people, he will be held responsible for what he did. And people will see the evidence with their own eyes, rather than having lawyers tell you what it is or having rumors and innuendo and, and character assassination. We'll hear the evidence, we'll see the evidence, and we'll let a jury decide where that takes us. So the civil procedure then uh, is uh, going to uh, continue, and that's what we're going to hear about over the next uh, few months. What is likely to come out of it? Is it damages that Mrs. Diallo will be seeking, and will she get them? It'll be money damages. Um, she deserves to be compensated for what happened to her. Um, as I said in the press conference, and I'll say to you that uh, any woman or any victim of a crime who's assaulted or sexually assaulted in the United States civil justice system is, is entitled as a matter of right and it's appropriate as well to be compensated for what they had to go through. Now, of course, here in France, uh, there's a lot of, there have been a lot of incomprehensions about the way the American legal system operates. A lot has been made of a phone call that was made to a prison, the suspicion that, in fact, she was always after money. Um, how do you respond to that? How do you scotch that? Well, the, the phone call was false. Um, the phone call, she never said on this recorded phone call that uh, I know this guy's got a lot of money, I know what I'm doing. She never said it. So that's how I contend with that. 
Um, as far as a civil lawsuit goes, as I said, um, she, as does every other victim in America under our civil justice system, has a right to be compensated monetarily for what she has gone through. And a jury will determine how much money is appropriate. Um, I can tell you that she would have much rather have had, if she had a choice, if you had posed a question to Ms. Diallo, would you rather Mr. Strauss-Kahn go to jail for 20 years or 15 years or, and get no money, or would you rather have $10 million and he not go to jail? He would, she would choose him going to jail and getting no money. And at this stage, how determined is she to press on? How determined are you to press on? Well, we're not giving up. I mean, we, we, we are fighters. And um, as I said, our, our process is only beginning. Um, I am looking forward to continuing this case, to speaking to other victims, to taking depositions, serving subpoenas, litigating the case the way our firm has always litigated cases. And um, Ms. Diallo uh, is a strong woman. Um, she uh, is going to have the courage to continue despite this setback. Um, it's a long process. But now more than ever, she wants to see a jury tell her that she did not consent to what happened in that room. Douglas Wigner, thanks very much indeed for Thank your time. You. Thanks for having been our guest. That's the end of this interview today. We'll be back very soon for another Do Stay With Us in Hong Kong.